Welcome back to Pluto TV, Francis, Jason, the original two back in action. You've oh. seen any mixture of like five, six different combinations, but look, sometimes you gotta bring back the originals. Yeah, I've been running around, I apologize, I've left you here. Where have you been? Tell uh, the people. In NYC, mm -hmm. um, I was in Scotland before that, mm. I was in Mexico before that, I was in Uganda before that. I really don't know what time zone. Have you been to Los Angeles? Uh, it's a couple of times, not bad. How are you dealing with the jet lag? <laughs> oh my God. At like three in the morning, man, I'm wild. You know what guys do at three in the morning when they're jet lagged? I know exactly what the guy. <laughs> they watch three in the morning TV. What the hell's wrong what with you, man? Messed what did you think? Yeah, I was wagging in it. <laughs> These are things we discussed before the show. Uh, Francis, uh, sometimes you just can't make up a story uh, that's so good as Lucky Whitehead and yes. his name being just too. Is ironic the right word here? It's no, ironic. It's not. His name is Lucky. Uh, for those who are not caught up to this point, because this goes up on Friday on Pluto TV, uh, Lucky Whitehead was released by, or I should say cut, by the Dallas Cowboys about a day and a half, two days before training camp was about to begin. We're gonna preempt this with the fact that Lucky Whitehead caught, I think, three footballs in a game total uh, throughout last season, and I think he fumbled one of them. <laughs> Lucky Whitehead was not necessarily a good wide receiver, but he was vying for a spot on the 53-man roster. Well, an incident not too long ago happened in Virginia where Lucky Whitehead was uh, accused or technically arrested because the guy who was pretending to be Lucky Whitehead had Lucky Whitehead's name, no identification on him, his birthday, and gave him, believe it or not, Lucky Whitehead's social security number. Turns out, Francis, well, Lucky Whitehead didn't do any of that. Yep. He didn't shoplift, he wasn't there, and the Dallas Cowboys still opted to cut him. Now, hmm, what's so interesting about this I want to start with is Jason Garrett and Jerry Jones' responses because they took the Marshawn Lynch. They pleaded the they pleaded the the Marshawn, if you will. Yep. And here's both of their press conferences. We're actually uh, yesterday we made a decision that we thought was in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys. And we're gonna stand by that decision, we're gonna move on. Not fair to him to just keep saying that over and over. It's the truth. We made a decision that we thought was in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I think the best thing for Lucky is to have a clean slate. And he'll have a new opportunity somewhere else, that's good for him. And again, it's in the best interest of our football team. Did he tell you that he didn't do it? We had a number of conversations with Lucky regarding this. And again, uh, we made a decision that we think is in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys. Francis, I'm curious. So, do you think uh, uh, this was? Do you think part of what their decision was was in the best interest of the Dallas? I Cowboys? I think it was the best interest in the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I really think it was the be decision was the best interest in the Dallas Cowboys. You think it was the best interest? I think that when I look at it, it was in the best interest of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, definitely of the Cowboys. Yeah, maybe of the Cowboys. In yeah. Dallas, I think it was in Dallas. Yeah. Nice shades. Nice uh, shades. Uh, this is <laughs> just, I like all by the way, pleading the Marshawn. And then, really quickly, sorry, Jerry Jones's quote uh, before I let you go into just the, the hypocrisy of the Cowboys organization in this one. When we do make a decision around here, <laughs> it's in the best, sorry, that it's in the best interest of the team to move on. There's one thing you can forget about that, forget about, and that is whether you're being fair or whether you're giving it consideration of what it means to the individual, Jones said. That doesn't happen around here. But he didn't do it. I love the comment, he needs to have a clean slate. That's what got me. That's the slate's clean, you imbecile. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? He looks like he regretted saying it immediately. immediately. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those comments. It's like, oh no, it's coming out my mouth. I can't stop it. Oh. What is he, who is the, is it Jim Carrey? Just yeah, trying, to, trying, get trying to get it back. Uh, so, right, there's one thing about the Cowboys. They're so representative in so many ways about everything that's wrong with America at times. Ooh, um, wow, that's a really, but go on. No, now, I, I'm, so I'm not I'm talking curious. about, I'm not talking about <laughs> like everyone who likes the Cowboys. Like, yeah, they're, they're, uh, apparently they're, they're said to be America's team, drenched in patriotism and what they are supposed to stand for. Fair. But yet they're so convoluted with what they value as something to be the best interest of the team. So you have a guy who, yeah, we're not gonna sit here and say that he was uh, an unbelievable player and they had to have him. But where are those morals when you have a player that you think is good, but he does not stand for the best interest of the team? Someone like Greg Hardy, who consistently doesn't stand for what you're saying your values are. Right. But you don't come out with any uh, comments like this. He, what about his clean slate? What about those comments? It's because they 
Oh, because you think he's an asset to your team, therefore all those morals are tossed out the window. Right, if you're good at football, you can do yeah. whatever you want. Well, maybe, I, let me, I won't retract it, because I still think there's a lot of things that go inside with America. I think that the NFL and their policies and their most vocal advocates who work for them, they're representative of what is wrong with America at times and how outrage is pushed towards someone who takes a knee, but then outrage is not pushed towards someone who beats their wife relentlessly and the team resigns them. It's very confusing as to what they view as acceptable in the, the league. It's just the evidence has become overwhelming in terms of you know what the NFL, I mean, here's the thing, we have to stop pretending, not we, we obviously don't pretend about these things, but the mainstream media and the media in general has to stop pretending that the NFL holds any sort of actual values yeah. when they make these decisions and these excuses. Therefore, you can criticize them, which is fine, but you just can't be shocked or surprised by this. It was an easy decision by the Cowboys that could have been just handled a million times uh, easier. Is that even correct phrasing? All the Cowboys had to do was, Lucky Whitehead's not that good of a receiver. He's not fit to make our team. While there, he is under investigation, we don't want that to be the reason he is cut. The reason he is cut is because he caught three passes from us last year and there's just not room for that on our 53 man roster. Just cut him because he's bad. Yeah. Don't make this whole thing about how he was falsely arrested, it wasn't even him. Also, Lucky Wayhead had this to say in an ABC News interview, not too long ago, he said he was uh, felt blindsided. I mean, I just get thrown to the wolves and uh, you know, like I said, I, I, was, I was blindsided. You know, I, my back was against the wall. You know, we, as an organization, we preach all these mantras, you know, and they, you know, they kind of went away from that. It makes sense, uh, I, but I'm so happy, and I agree with Jason Garrett. He's got now a clean slate. Yeah, it's, it, he can finally start over. Really look to, to to make amends for that horrible decision that he didn't make in his life. I was able to meet and talk with Colin Kaepernick ah. a little bit, um, and it's we didn't get into a lot. He's still kind of, but let's just be honest. He's a, a really, really amazing guy, really nice guy, and he's still reserved, I think, in what his comments are about the whole NFL situation. Well, I think he, feel he's well aware about yeah. what's going on, let's believe this. But he had something very interesting to say about the way that we, uh, a lot of people are, are looking to decriminalize um, black athletes who have came back into the NFL, mm. when it shouldn't be a means to decriminalize them. We should be focusing on the organization that has conflicted morals and not the people involved right. in, necessarily in the case, like Michael Vick. He said something so interesting about how he tried to withhold himself from trying to decriminalize him. Like he did something awful, served his time, came back and got a second chance. But like people were therefore using his uh, criminal past to rid, like to take away his opinion when it shouldn't have been that. It was just a fact that in that situation, he just made a stupid, stupid comment. Right. So I think that's something that has to be uh, reiterated when it comes to the NFL. It's the organization that has to be the forefront of our scrutiny, like at the highest level. They time and time again prove that they do not care about the athletes that are involved. They'll hide. I mean, what is it? how many cases of uh, what was the CT scan? Well, then we have a whole other story. Yeah, the whole story. But that won't that, be in Pluto, so you have to go over to the YouTube yeah. channel. Well, we'll talk about that in full detail. But yeah, not surprising. But we're glad he's got a clean slate.